Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech Talk.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. It's been almost a year that Turing has been on store shelves, but recently NVIDIA have done a refresh of sorts of the RTX 20 series by launching Super. The Super series of cards comprises of three models with two of them essentially replacing the launch cards with high-performance GPUs. But recently, Ada64 seemed to indicate that there would be an RTX 2080 Ti Super on the way. Well, this does not look to be the case. Several days ago, I reported that Ada64 had a new beta version available. It's version 6.00.5151, and it was released on the 14th of August 2019. There were numerous entries for the release notes, including CPU TDP, limit detection for second generation EPIC, detection for various Intel 10th generation CPUs, but... The one that we're focused on here is GPU information for NVIDIA GeForce RTX T10-8 and in brackets TU102. For those unfamiliar with the GPU cores inside NVIDIA graphics cards, the TU102 is the same GPU core which is found in the RTX 2080 Ti as well as the Quadro GPUs and also the Titan graphics card as well. But the GPU which is found in the RTX 2080 Ti is actually cut down compared to the core that is found inside the Titan or the Quadros. Not only do we have additional CUDA cores for the, let's say, the Quadro GPUs, 4608 versus 4352 of the Ti, but we also have additional memory chips as well. The bus is wider, 384 bit versus 352, which also means we have an additional 1 gigabyte of memory. Therefore, it was not exactly a major leap to say that the most logical thing for us to see is an RTX 2080 Ti Super, and we could have therefore presumed that we would see additional CUDA cores and potentially higher clocked memory as well, maybe with the full complement of 384-bit memory bus. But that does not look like it's the thing that this GPU is. Instead, this seems to be related to GeForce Now, because on the NVIDIA GeForce forums, several people have actually been testing GeForce Nows, which is obviously NVIDIA's game streaming service, and found that sometimes servers, particularly in the US region, US W2 servers, will report that they are running the RTX T10-8 graphics cards. So... What's really interesting about this is that while these cards have some have been taken down right now, the performance of the GPUs is actually inferior to the Tesla P40 cards. So one user actually ran a 3D Mark uh, Firestrike benchmark and found that there was about 50% decrease in performance, which is not exactly ideal if you're playing games. Obviously, 50% is kind of a lot. It's also worth noting that the cards aren't currently on the GeForce uh, Now beta, currently not able to play ray tracing uh, titles, or at least uh, enable ray tracing, because we have a non-DirectX 12 operating system which is being used. It's Windows Server 2012, so I suspect that this is going to be one of those things that NVIDIA are going to change pretty quickly. Do I think NVIDIA will launch a RTX 2080 Ti Super? Well, for one, I'm hoping that it's not being called that because it's a hideously unwieldy name. But the second thing is that at the moment, it doesn't necessarily need to. I mean, the Ti is the fastest card available to consumers. Um, yes, um, there are Titans and other GPUs, but basically speaking... Uh, AMD just cannot compete with the RTX 2080 Ti. So I think that NVIDIA may launch a Super if they feel that they're under a lot of pressure. They have said that they won't, but that doesn't really mean anything. And I guess it depends what they feel is better, to wait for GeForce 30 if they're under pressure, or they just want to quickly launch a new product and uh, keep the pressure on AMD. I wouldn't say no, 
But I think as the months roll on and we get closer to the launch of GeForce 30, which is obviously using the 7NM process, it becomes increasingly unlikely that uh, NVIDIA will do so. Next up is a couple of pieces of AMD news, the first of which is the Ryzen 5 3500, which is a bit unique in the current 3000 lineup because it is a 6-core processor and runs at around 4.1 GHz. I say around because we all know what XFR and Precision Boost mean with uh, AMD processors, but around one point, uh, sorry, 4.1 GHz and will retail at around 150 US dollars, at least that's what the rumor is right now. But it's very unique because it's the only Ryzen 3000 series CPU, based on the Zen 2 architecture anyway, which does not feature SMT. That's right, it is just six cores and six threads, so there is no multi-threading at all here. So that essentially means that uh, AMD are segmenting their product offering a little bit. So the 3600, which is the lowest end SKU other than that, uh, has a base frequency of 3.6 GHz, which is identical to the 3500, and a boost frequency of 4.2 GHz, so it's 100 MHz higher. The TDP is identical between these two car, uh, processors at 65 watts, and there's going to be a $50 price premium diff, uh, for the 3600 versus the 3500, so 199 US dollars versus 150 US dollars. So this basically means that this chip is aiming squarely at the i5-9500 as well as the 9400 uh, CPUs from, of course, Intel, which are priced at the high 100 mark. They're just shy of 200 bucks, so like 180, 190, depending upon your retailer. Is this going to be enough for power users? Probably not, but I suspect for someone who is maybe just entering the AM4 platform and wants to, say, just do gaming, this may be a really nice processor. I've said before many times that the 3600 is probably about the best value in the Ryzen 3000 lineup if you purely game. I mean, 200 bucks for 12 threads is really good value. And there's not that much of a performance leap even going to the 3900 in pure gaming tasks. Obviously, video encoding, 3D edit, 3D rendering, that type of stuff is completely different. But for pure gaming, there's not a massive leap from the 3600 going to, let's say, even the 3900. Obviously, without SMT, you are missing some a lot of potential performance, but for 150 US dollars... I suspect some people would rather put that into the graphics card and if you, it's a choice between getting a much better graphics card or saving a little bit of money and saving a little bit of money on the CPU for pure gaming that's probably about the best way to go and besides the fact that with the AM4 platform it's very easy to upgrade as well. And lastly a quick tidbit regarding Narve and variants of the cards. So, some of this information is actually official. It comes to us via AMD's own RDNA white paper, which you can Google. It's available even on their own website. And there's a very interesting note on figure 9, which is on page 13 of the document. And that is that, and I'm going to quote this verbatim, additional multi-precision ops for some Narve variance is noted on figure 9. Directly below that in page 14, first paragraph, it says that I quote, some variants of the dual compute unit expose additional mixed precision dot product modes in the ALUs, primarily for accelerating machine learning inference. A mixed precision FMA.2 will compute two half-precision multiplications and then add the results to a single-precision accumulator. For even greater throughput, some ALUs will support 8-bit integer dot 4 operations and 4-bit dot 8 operations, all of which use 32-bit accumulators to avoid any overflows. End quote. Also, if you start looking through a lot of uh, LLVM stuff, the patches which are available like GitHub and so on, you can clearly see that Narve 10, Narve 12, and 14 have slightly different instruction sets, and this looks like it's going to continue with Narve 20 and beyond. 
I'll definitely be doing a deeper analysis as more information comes to light, because at the moment there are a lot of questions we still have uh, based upon the information that is available. Unfortunately, there are still some holes in the information. But it looks like AMD have an equivalent of in, uh, NVIDIA's Tensor Core. When I say equivalent, it's not exactly identical, but it's going to be close enough. And what we do know about AMD in terms of their plans is that machine learning is an extremely lucrative area. And Lisa Su, as well as others at AMD, have mentioned several times uh, recently even that it's one of the areas that they want to pursue uh, in terms of revenue and growth. It's very interesting what AMD are doing with their GPU lineup right now with very different designs based upon the usage scenario. If you go back to March, I did release a video which detailed the fact that AMD would be featuring ray tracing in their uh, NAV A20 graphics cards, which obviously has now been pretty much confirmed by the company themselves. But back then, Alika had also told me that AMD would be releasing GPUs which would be almost ASIC-like, designed specifically for the data center high-performance computing, and that looks like it's the case, with Arcturus being the first of these designs. And clearly, this is going to continue to evolve over the next several years. But in regards to Nave and its tensor-like capabilities, well, yeah, my source also told me that we would see professional usage-based Nave cards as well, and possibly delve into features such as video encoding, machine learning capabilities, and I guess what I'm very curious about in the long term is what AMD are planning to do and how they're going to, in the long term, with their roadmap, segment the different product offerings and what we're going to get for, say, a gaming GPU, what capabilities it's going to have, what the data center cards are going to be, what workstation cards are going to be, and we're even seeing some hints of that with the uh, Threadripper 3000 CPUs. After all, recently we covered a leak that uh, Fred Ripper would be segmented into two product lineups, one which would be much like it is now, aim aiming at like content creators or people who don't necessarily need a full workstation but do need an awful lot of I.O. and processor cores. But there would also be a pro lineup as well, which would feature potentially more processor cores. It's not been clarified yet whether we would see uh, sorry, how the CPU cores would be divided up in between the pro lineup and the regular lineup of uh, Threadripper, but also potentially more memory channels and other features. So yeah, AMD definitely have a very different strategy compared to what they did a couple of years ago. With all of that said though, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, because that helps us out a massive amount and also subscribe to the channel because that also helps us out a insane amount and i thank you very much for watching the video take care of yourself bye for now